Let's juice it up. Here we go, boys. Ike's not here to supervise. So for a long time, you guys have been asking me to make a truck update. Uh, for those of you who are maybe new to the channel, this is my 1966 Chevrolet C10 short bed step side pickup truck that I started restoring in high school. Uh, it was probably six or so years ago. Um, and I took it very seriously in the beginning. Uh, it was taken down to bare metal. Uh, it was sandblasted. I pour 15 the entire chassis and it has a brand new drive line. Uh, but then college happened and go-kart stuff started taking off on the YouTube channel. So this kind of fell by the wayside. But I really want to get it ready for next summer. I want to take it on a long road trip on the Hot Rod Power Tour. We made a video about this uh, over the summer and you need to check it out if you have not seen it already. It was one of my favorite videos uh, personally to date. So I mentioned that the driveline is brand new. We have a 350 cubic inch Chevrolet Performance, 330 horse, 385 torque, uh, crate engine, it's brand new, zero miles on it, backed by a Tremec TKO five-speed transmission with overdrive. And behind that is a 373 uh, rear gear with positive traction. It's been converted to five on five lug, uh, front disc brake conversion. I have power steering conversion, uh, planning on putting air conditioning in it. Uh, it should be a really nice truck by the time it's done. But I got caught in the woods and kind of the main reason I slowed down on this was body work. The project really slowed down when it was time to handle the body. So the original truck cab was blue, but the bottom was all rusted out. It had all kinds of Bondo and it was disgusting. So we looked around for a long time and we actually found this, uh, this red cab right here. And it's actually used to be part of a fire truck, um, but the top was rusted out. So what we did was we braced it up a bunch of different ways, diagonal ways and the, the door jams and everything. We cut the top off of the red fire truck cab and we actually put the blue cab on it. I bet now you can't tell. Uh, this has taken me a long time to make it slick uh, and it's not even gloss. If it was gloss paint, you'd probably still be able to tell. So that's probably why I'm gonna go with a satin fish and finish eventually. And you can still kind of tell in a couple places the bodywork isn't perfect. Still have a little bit more work to do there. So I'm gonna start making videos of my progress. It might be slow and it may not be consistent, but I'm gonna try to get this thing done by next summer. So I mentioned that the fire truck cab was not as rusty as the original blue cab. It was still rusty though. I had to put uh, new rocker panels in it, partial new floor pan, and a couple other miscellaneous rust uh, repair spots to do in the cab. So here's what I'm working with right now. So I had to weld that seam together and then uh, like grind it smooth. And I'm in the process of using body filler to fill it back in. It's very time consuming and it should look a lot better than that when it's done, but it's kind of a mess right now. I'm not super proud of that. I don't know why I started with that. Um, I had to weld in these pieces where we cut the top at. So I just need to quick uh, uh, self etching primer there and that'll be done. And then I've also been working a lot on the firewall, just kind of roughing up the original paint, getting it ready for more paint. Uh, I had to shave part of the drip rail just because it was so far gone and it's still pretty rusty. Um, but what I'm gonna do is just load it up with seam sealer and call it a day because like, I don't care about this thing being perfect anymore. I just want it to be done so I can enjoy it. So I'm just thinking gobs of seam sealer uh, to fill in these holes. It's been sandblasted, uh, so there should be no more rust spreading in there and it's been covered with self etching primer. So I'm gonna start with painting those bare spots over there, then load it up with some seam sealer. All right, it's not perfect, but I mean, I can always go back and touch it up with sandpaper. That's what I found body work. It's just like, you do it, you think it's perfect, you paint it, you find out it's not perfect, you sand it some more, you paint it. It's just a process until it gets closer and closer to being perfect, but it's still never really perfect. Uh, these spots where you can clearly see the welding, not concerned about that, because that's where weather stripping is gonna go. So I'm gonna move on to that side. So now I'm gonna use some seam sealer. Honestly, I've never used this stuff before, but like how hard could it be, right? Um, I've already taken a hamburger wheel uh, to these seams right here and got the old seam sealer off and it's ready for the new juice. So I'm gonna start on the firewall actually uh, and just load it up. 
that's the plan. Fill up all the holes with seam sealer because um, that's about 100,000 times faster than cutting out the firewall and putting in a new one. And like I keep saying, I just want to enjoy the truck. Let's juice it up. Here we go, boys. Ike's not here to supervise. Okay. Already running into problems. They did sell this to me on special, and they said it might be hard, but I'm probably also doing something wrong. Oh, there was a seal, I think. Let's keep it moving. Oh, there we go. Look at that stuff, guys. Ooh. <laughs> Let's juice it up. All right, so I have the firewall filled in decently well. I'm gonna move on to the seams up on the cap. Okay, so I think that's all the seams I need to seal for now. So that's all I have time for tonight, guys. I did some painting and did some seam sealing. I can let it dry, come back another day, start sanding. Good morning, guys. So I found out that you cannot, in fact, sand seam sealer. Uh, so what I've been doing this morning is focusing on that back seam. This back seam has been concerning me for a long time, so I'm finally tackling it. I had a lot of body filler built up there, so uh, I used the old hamburger wheel again to uh, just kind of break down most of it uh, until I just have like a thin strip right along the seam. So that's what I'm still going for. Uh, I need to add a little bit more body filler, but I'm just gonna go ahead and throw some self-etching primer on it just cause it's so darn messy. I just want like a clean sheet so I can see uh, better see what's even and what's not even. Oh yeah, it's not even at all. Lots of pinholes in it. I got a lot more work to do. I pulled the old Cadillac out so I could do some painting over here. Uh, a few weeks ago, I sandblasted uh, underneath the old drip rail here. I'm gonna shave the strip rail, I'm not gonna put it back, because uh, there was a lot of pitted rust, I had to sandblast to get it all off. So, uh, now I just need to use some body filler. Well, first, I'm gonna use my self-etching primer and, uh, and prime this area right here. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna use some body filler, fill it in, sand it down, repeat, same old, same old, let's do it. Okie dokie, just mixing a little bit of body filler here. I'm gonna put her on the drip rail. Seems like every time I apply body filler, I'm way too liberal. And then the next time I'm like, all right, I'm not gonna be as liberal this time. And then it happens again. Let's give it a shot.
So that body filler dried, I sanded it and I applied another coat of body filler and then I came back and hit this back section with the 320 grit sandpaper. This whole time I've been telling myself I need to work from the top down and I keep getting carried away from that. So I really just need to fix this spot and there are a couple small spots that need some putty up there and then I think I should focus more down there. But I think this stuff down here is gonna be easier because it's just gonna be a scuff up and hit it with primer. It doesn't need, uh, it's not rusty, uh, it doesn't have any dents, and like it wasn't welded together. So it really shouldn't need any body filler at all, just a scuff and a paint. So this is the second round of body filler and sanding on this one drip rail. Stuff just takes a long time. Uh, and then I'm gonna be ready for some more paint to kind of reset and see where I'm at. And then I know for a fact I'm going to need another round of body filler. So, and then once all that's done, the, the drip rail is a, is a main area because there's a lot of pitting there. Um, and then just a couple more spots around here. I have some, some body filler here that I need to sand. But after, after the drip rails, uh, these back sections here, and then I have to redo my seam sealer, of course. And then the firewall, the sanding should go quickly. Uh, and then I can just hit the whole thing with just a high build primer, really lay it on there. Uh, so I have lots to work with for uh, wet sanding. I think that's the third round of paint now. And as you can see, it's getting better. It was like the service of the moon before it was so pitted. Uh, but slowly but surely, we're getting there. So I'm gonna move on to sanding on the back section there, and same thing. Good morning, guys. Today I'm gonna to be focusing on the holes that were drilled in the dash of this truck. So as I mentioned before, this cab used to be a fire truck, and they had all kinds of auxiliary gauges and levers and switches in here, and they had drill holes in the dashboard to fit in there. Well, I don't want those, so I need to fill all of them in. Uh, this is going to be the biggest one. It's three inch. Uh, it's a three inch circle hole right there. Have these right here, those there, and uh, these. I'm going to need to. I guess I'm going to try to put a screwdriver in there, pry it out, flatten it out, and then fill it in with weld. Uh, but th this one is probably the only one that's going to need a patch panel. So I have a reproduction part here. It's the inner rocker panel. It goes behind the rocker panel, and you seam weld it to the outer rocker panel. Anyway, I don't need the rest of it. I, I took what I already needed. Uh, so I'm gonna cut a three inch circle out of here and that's gonna be my patch panel. So I tightened up this hose clamp to be the rough size of the hole, actually a little bit bigger so I have some wiggle room. And then I trace it on the piece of metal over here. So now I'm gonna cut it out. Okay, so this finally fits. So now I'm gonna go ahead and tack a corner, make some adjustments, tack a corner, make some adjustments, keep working my way around. So it has been a few days since I've seen you. I've done a little bit more work to the truck uh, as well. Uh, and Ike is here, because we're about to start filming a video on our lifted go-kart again. And I want him to give me his honest opinion because the camera can hide some things. Doing a fine job for an amateur. No, I, it's actually looking really good. I think good. that's accurate. Fine job for an amateur Not, is dude, accurate. Dude, you're doing, if, if, if you wanted me to put amateur in there, you're doing an exceptional job for an amateur. 
Well, thanks, buddy. Uh, if I didn't know that this had been severed and joined from two other cabs, I probably wouldn't notice, honestly. So, uh, it's looking really good. Little, little stuff here and there, but it's all stuff that can be taken care of on the final, uh, on the high build. Yeah. Yeah. And the wet yeah. sanding. Yeah. So the seam sealer, seam sealer is still kind of a mess. I cleaned it up with uh, uh, a razor blade and it's kind of better. Uh, I still think it needs touching up. Did you explain to them that, you know, you, you did a, a not so exceptional job on the seam sealer because you thought I oh, yeah. said that. Yeah, well, I don't sanded. know if it was you or somebody else, maybe Jason, but I thought yeah. someone told me nah. that it was sandable, but it's not. Nah, and that's it's completely not. on me because <laughs> everyone knows that apparently. So <laughs> <laughs> It is what it is. Yeah. Again, you're an amateur. You've never done body work until this. Yes. So That's correct. It's, it's, it's looking great. Thanks, bud. So that back seam is, I'm honestly happy with it, that back seam. Uh, there are a couple little spots that if you were really looking at it, you'd be like, eh, but Who's like, look up at the dude, back that's of what head. I'm saying. I've never looked at that part on your truck. Yeah. It I've looks, only done it, it to compare great. it to mine, but yeah. Yeah, it looks great. But the big thing I got done off camera was the top of the dash. I sanded it down uh, and I painted it. There were like four really large, actually five large holes in the uh, in the dash here because uh, it used to be a fire truck and there were like additional gauges. So there was a big one here. There was, and there were smaller ones here, 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 and here. Um, so you can still kind of see the spots uh, it's just kind of a light dusting of primer I have, have on there, but there are a couple low spots, so it's gonna need a little bit more body filler, and then it's gonna be good to go. And there are a couple more holes on the front of the dash that I need to take care of too. There was a hole there I had to weld shut and have a little bit of body filler there, and there's another hole on the other side of the dash over there. But honestly, I really don't think I'm that far away from primer. Like this whole back section has been scuffed. You know, a professional would probably say, take it down to bare metal, but this paint's been here for 60 years and it's it's some tough paint. It does not want to come off. So I just scuffed it and I'm gonna prime over it. Uh, I need to take care of the body filler or just the holes in the dash still. Uh, and then the seam sealer and then I think it'll be ready for uh, like a high build primer. Then I can start wet sanding and it'll all be one color finally. Okay, so this has been the official uh, first project truck update in a long time from my 1966 Chevrolet C10. If you wanna see more of them, uh, please leave a thumbs up uh, and tell all your friends and leave a nice comment for me even if I'm an idiot because I thought seam sealer was sandable. It'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. Uh, I think I wanna paint it like forest green now it changes every week but i want to do forest green satin so yeah the rough plan is to make a bonus video truck update every other friday uh, that could change depending on what other things i have going on but that's the plan and i want to stick to that and i want to have this thing ready to go for next summer so thanks for watching subscribe to the channel leave a thumbs up see you next time